Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the asteroid belt, but specifically about a new theory that actually puts a question or a mystery on how this beautiful belt was created back in the days. Anyway, let's talk about this in more detail and welcome to What The Math. Now this specific simulation is actually the simulation of the most dangerous, potentially dangerous, uh, so-called close Earth encounter asteroids. Now these are all over the place, you can see there's quite a lot of them, we've been tracking them for many many years, but we're actually going to be talking about all of the asteroids in the asteroid belt, including the ones that are not considered to be dangerous, because what I wanted to talk about is this new uh, proposition slash theory from University of Bordeaux by two scientists, Sean Raymond and Andre Isidoro, who proposed that, well, our understanding of how this belt was created might have actually been wrong. Let me, let me kind of backtrack a little bit, create a new system here with the sun in the middle, and imagine this is the young sun a long, long, long time ago, and let's let's put a little bit of uh, a ring around this. And the idea here is that you know, back in the days, a long time ago, billions of years ago, um, it's very likely that Sun, when it was just kind of being born, had this huge amount of uh, particles orbiting around it, and we're going to make this more ring-like because we want to be able to see it a little bit easier. And let's actually also make it different colors, just because there's different colors of asteroids out there. So we're going to just kind of add a bunch of them. And so this might have been sort of the image of the early sun, early solar system. A lot of particles orbiting around. And a lot of these particles eventually started to kind of uh, aggregate and accumulate into larger pieces, create what's known as planetesimals. And those planetesimals at some point it became planets. I've made a video about this a few uh, months ago, possibly a year ago, where I kind of created a simulation that shows you how, to, how this ha probably happened. But what these scientists suggest is that, well, all of this is probably correct, except for one part. We think that the asteroid belt may have actually not existed. Now, currently there's two prevailing theories about how the asteroid belt was actually made. One of those theories uh, says this. One of those theories says that it's possibly, it's probable, it's very likely that the asteroid belt, which I'm about to add right here. There it is. So let's actually maybe add a little bit more because it's hard to see it. This asteroid belt uh, was a result of a uh, planet never really materializing due to the effects of Jupiter and inner planets, basically due to the gravitational forces of, let's just say, Mars and Earth, but really more Earth than anything else because it's more uh, more massive, so Earth right here, and the Jupiter that would be somewhere right here, uh, their effects caused uh, this planet to never become a planet, it just kind of stayed as, as flying debris, and um, this theory is sound, it sounds good, but there's a small problem. Um, according to this theory, there, there should have been like several masses of Earth in this region of space, but the total mass of the entire asteroid belt is like 1% of the mass of Earth. So that kind of leaves us with this empty, non-existent mass that we don't know what happened to it. We don't really know where it went. Okay, the other theory says that, uh, well, maybe, just maybe, this was a planet and then it fell apart, and created the debris, kind of like uh, many of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn became the rings. But once again, you know, where's the rest of the mass? It doesn't really make sense. So instead, this is what these two scientists from University of Bordeaux proposed, and it's actually a very kind of a unusual but very sound idea. They proposed that it's very likely there was nothing there. As a matter of fact, this was completely empty. And the majority of particles, the majority of planetesimals, were either in between the Sun and the uh, terrestrial planets on the inside, which is kind of what we actually do observe in many other um, solar systems. Like, for example, we recently detected something very similar in a system known as HL2. Uh, 
Tauri, and you can actually see here's what the picture looks like. And uh, the other asteroids, slightly different in composition, came from beyond Jupiter. So these would be so-called um, C-type asteroids. And these would be the S-type asteroids. We do have these two major types of asteroids in the asteroid belt. Now, if you actually run the simulation for many, 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 many millions and billions of years, what you realize is that the inner planets, and here we're talking about Earth and Mercury, which is somewhere right there. I actually put Earth a little bit too far away, but that's okay. Venus and Mars. Um, very likely we'll start kicking these out and they will actually start assuming position in the space between Earth and Jupiter. It's very unusual, but it will actually start happening. And because Jupiter is so massive, it's going to start attracting these other asteroids, and they'll start assuming the uh, spot between uh, Jupiter and, I guess, Mars would be here, not Earth. Earth should be a lot closer. Earth should be right here. Um, so they would start assuming this position here. And so what you would have at the end are the asteroids, and let's maybe just go here for a second, potentially hazard those asteroids again. You would have these uh, two major types of asteroids. The S-type asteroids would be orbiting a little bit closer uh, in between Earth and the asteroid belt, and then the C-type asteroids would be orbiting a little bit farther between Jupiter and the asteroid belt. And this is exactly what we actually detect, and this is kind of unusually very accurate at predicting what uh, may have actually happened. The other reason why this theory actually makes a lot of sense is because all other theories um, don't consider or don't acknowledge the mass of Mars. Now, if, astero if the asteroid belt was originally a planet, or if it kind of uh, was supposed to become a planet, Mars would also be a lot more massive. It actually would have to have a lot more mass, just like we usually detect in other um, exoplanets or around other stars in our, in our galaxy. But Mars is the least massive object we have of all the terrestrial planets, so it doesn't really make sense if the asteroid belt was a planetary object or if it was supposed to become a planetary object, Mars would be really, really massive. Instead, Mars is small and so is the asteroid belt. So chances are that they're actually kind of correct. It's a crazy theory, but according to their theory, there was no asteroid belt a long time ago. It was created through the interaction of inner asteroids and outer asteroids with the planets. And those planets rearranged the formation of these asteroids and created what we have here, as you can see right now. So these very unusual orbits, uh, ast asteroid orbits, were the result of the interaction between masses of planets and, of course, the asteroids themselves. So this is an alternative model. It actually has no name yet, but it's probably one of the more plausible theories I've heard about the creation of the asteroid belt. And I would definitely not disregard it anytime soon because it actually explains away quite a lot of different things about the asteroid belt that I'm about to place right here around our sun and of course about the creation of these asteroids and where they kind of came from and why there's actually two major types and which is usually very difficult to explain but this theory definitely covers all of the bases. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully you learned something from it and now you know a little bit more about the creation of the asteroid belt and how it may have actually started. Whether this is true or not, we'll find out maybe in the next few years when we actually visit some of these asteroids and study them in more detail. But for now, this is a pretty interesting assumption. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. Now let's finish this video by exploding everything. And look at how beautiful this is.